Hello and welcome to this section of the HP 50 Calculator Tutor. Uh, in this section what we're going to do is tackle some very important buttons on the face of the calculator. Uh, we've done a pretty good job of, of hitting all of the major major guys that are just printed up here with the exception of the very important functions uh, here, this EEX button. This is how you enter scientific notation. Uh, we also haven't really talked about the trig functions yet too much so we'll do that as well. Uh, scientific notation is something you're going to find yourself using constantly, so we need to make sure and know how to, how to use it. Uh, basically, if you want to enter a large number, like 5 times 10 to the 7 or something, what, the way you do it is uh, 5, and then this button acts as a shortcut for times 10 to the power of 7. So when you press this EEX button, it just puts an E on the screen, and this basically means 5 times 10 to the power of 7. So if I hit enter here, the calculator is going to suck that in, and because of the mode my calculator is currently in, it's going to put it on the screen with all of its zeros there. And so you can see if, it, if it's 5 times 10 to the 7, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's printing that out accordingly. Alright, now if you wanted to multiply this number by 2 times 10 to the 3, uh, you would go 2 times 10 to the 3. And it would put it right there in the stack. Now I could hit enter and then hit multiply, but I could just hit multiply right now. And then there you go. Now let's multiply it by something even larger. 85 times 10 to the uh, 19, let's say. Let's hit the uh, multiply button. So I'm going to multiply these two numbers again. That number was too large to fit on the screen, so the calculator tells me it's 8.5 times 10 to the 31. So you take this decimal and you shove it to the right 31 places, and that's how big that number is. Uh, so, you know, don't try to use the multiply button here. When you, when you see 2 times 10 to the 6, don't go 2 times 10 to the 6 because as soon as you hit this button, since I'm in RPN mode, it doesn't know what to do. This button is, is reserved for when you're multiplying two items on the stack. If you want 2 times 10 to the 7, you have to hit this button and then hit the 7 and use the number like that. Now, what if you want to enter a very small number, you know, maybe a 3.5 times 10 to the minus 8, a very, very small number where you're shifting the decimal to the left. So you would go 2.5 times 10, and the way you would do it is hit the 8. Now, that would be a positive 8, but if you just hit this plus minus, it toggles the last uh, entry that you put in there. So if you kind of screw that up, you can keep hitting this button and toggle it the way that you that you like it. So the way you read it is 2.5 times 10 to the negative 8. And so what you read on the screen should be exactly what you're trying to enter. And if you hit enter here, then you'll see this is a very small number. 2.5, the decimal would be here. If you shift it 8 times to the left, you get a decimal there. So if you wanted to multiply this times 14, times 10 to the negative 10, you wouldn't put your 10 in there, and then you hit the plus minus to make it negative, 14 times 10 to the minus 10, multiply, this is an extremely small number, so it prints it on the screen, 3.5 times 10 to the negative 17. Uh, and of course you can mix these guys, if I'm going to take this very small number and multiply by 5.2369 times 10, you know, to the 41st power, that's a huge number. I can do that, no problem. Calculator will spit that back 1.83291 times 10 to the 25. So that's how to handle this button. It's honestly one of the most important buttons on the calculator because in science and engineering, you're constantly entering in uh, these numbers in scientific notation. So it's, it's, it's quite important. Okay, now I'd like to turn our attention to the very, very important buttons, sine, cosine, and tangent, which are printed right on the calculator face, and also their inverses, uh, arc sine, which is a sine, arc tangent, or I should say arc cosine, and arc tangent. So these are the inverse of the sine, the inverse of the cosine, and the inverse of the tangent. It all works uh, just the same. To access the sine button, you press the button. To access its inverse, you hit the white arrow, which is going to be this guy right here. So nothing too special. The only thing you have to be really careful about when you're dealing with any of these trig functions is to really realize what mode you're in. Right now we're in radian mode. So if you're trying to take the sine of 60 degrees, it's not going to work right because it, it thinks that if you type in 60 for an angle, it's going to think it's 60 radians right now. So you have to think in terms of that. And of course the way you change the calculator mode of degrees is to go in the mode menu and you see right here it says angle measure we're in currently in radians. Most of the time in science and engineering you'll stay in radians, but uh, you just need to know that if you start getting weird answers. So to use these guys, it's exactly the way you would think. If you want to take, let's say, uh, the sine 
of, you know, let's say uh, the sine of uh, pi over 2, then you're going to have to enter pi over 2 into the calculator and then put that on the stack and then hit the sign button because any of these buttons, since we're in RPN mode, which is the way I run the calculator, um, these guys are going to operate on the last guy there in the stack. So here's the pi button down here. So if I go white arrow pi, I can stick that on the stack there. Uh, and I can hit 2 and put that on the stack and divide these guys. That gives me pi over 2, right? So now I've got an exact number. There's no real approximation here. I'm not typing in decimals. I'm putting exactly pi over 2. If I hit the sign button, it should evaluate the sign of pi over 2, which you should think back to your unit circle. Pi over 2 radians is straight up and down, so the answer should be 1. And the answer is 1 because pi over 2 radians is straight up on the y-axis, so you should get your 1 back. Um, if you take the sine of zero, just put zero on the stack there, think of zero uh, radians, uh, is right here on the x-axis, you take the sine, you should get zero. And that's in fact what we do get back. So it all behaves the same way. If you take pi over four, let's say, uh, pi, and put four, divide by, so I've got pi over four. Let me get rid of this extra pi I have here. Let me hit this arrow. Uh, it's not printed on this calculator, but this arrow by itself just swaps around the last two items on the stack. It's a very, very handy thing. Put this guy at the bottle, bottom, I'll hit the arrow to drop it off just because I don't like looking at it. So I have pi over 4. Now if I hit cosine pi over 4, I'm going to get square root of 2 over 2. Now if you think back to your trigonometry or my trigonometry tutor that I have, um, you memorize, or you should memorize, these very, very important trig angles, pi over 4, pi over 6, pi over 3, and all of the trig functions for those very special angles. And this is the exact answer, square root of 2 over 2. Of course, if you want to see the decimal, uh, you can hit the number button down here. You know, But this isn't very nice, 0 0.707, blah, blah, blah. What you really want is the exact number most of the time. And of course, you can get the decimal anytime you like. Okay. Now, tangent behaves the same way. You type, you type something in, 4 radians, let's say, and you hit the tangent button. And of course, it's going to try to keep it exact because it's, it's, this is a, a weird decimal that's coming out for the answer. It tries to keep everything exact. We'll hit orange, go to number, and it'll convert it for us. Now, to use the inverses, it's exactly the way you would think. You need to put a number in there, hit the inverse sign or the arc sign. It'll spit an angle back to you. So the easiest one to do is, is sort of the uh, mirror image of what we did before. If we take a 1 and stick it on the stack and do an inverse sine or an arc sine, it should return the angle that corresponds to a sine of uh, a value of a sine that equals 1. So when we do that, we get pi over 2 back. Just the same way as we just sh showed a minute ago, if we take the sine of pi over 2 radians, we get 1. So if we take the inverse sine of 1, we should get pi over 2 radians back, and we do. And so all of these uh, inverses, arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, work uh, just fine. Uh, like that. Now, uh, briefly, I'll just go into the mode menu, switch it over from radians, put the plus minus to send us two degrees, we'll hit OK. So now we're in degree mode. So if you do pi over two, you know, hit pi, uh, we put two divided by, so we have pi over two on the stack, now we hit the sign button, uh, now it doesn't quite do the same thing. See, it doesn't return a nice value of one, because this is not pi over two radians anymore. This is this is some decimal number of degrees. So the sign of that very small number is not, um, is not a pretty, you know, nice, even, exact thing. So it's giving it, it's just telling us, hey, when you evaluate this, you're, you're getting something that's not very pretty, so I'm going to leave it exact. We can get to the actual number by hitting number like that. And the answer to that is 2.7 times 10 to the minus 2. The reason we got a different answer for the same input is because that was in, in interpreting it in terms of degrees. But now, if I take 90, remember pi over 2 radians is the same as 90 degrees. So if I put 90 over here and hit sign, I'm going to get 1 back. So this is just a difference in calculator modes. Before we were in radians, and now we're in degrees. I just wanted to kind of illustrate that for you. That's basically what I wanted to cover in this section. The, um, the scientific notation button to put powers of 10 in there, and also the trig functions. Uh, go ahead and play around with it. Make sure you understand it, because these... These buttons here that we're talking about, these functions are some of the core features of any calculator, really. So uh, once you know how to use these guys, it's, it's these are the buttons that you'll probably use most, or at least some of the buttons you'll use most uh, as you use the calculator in your class and in your homework.